How you doing, Jean? Fine. Today's July 6th. 1991. It's 1991, and it's 2.27 on, on Sunday. Time. On Sunday. No, Saturday. 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 You're going back tomorrow, right? When you're off work, you get lost for a week. <laughs> I know. I think it lost for a lot you, longer than that. You, you, you lose track of the time, don't you, Wally? Yeah, you sure do. I like to lose track of it. That'd, <laughs> like that'd, be, that'd be a hobby for me, just to lose track of time. Yeah. What we're trying to do is capture some of the time of uh, Grandpa. Yeah. The time that he's been around for... 96 years. 96 years. Uh, but, uh, yep. You, you've, uh, how long you been, when did you come over here, Grandpa? Tell us, where, where are you? Wait, I'm going to start my, give you my uh, life history. Okay, okay. You start from where you want I to. I was born April, uh, April 6th, 1895. April 6th. 1895. 1895. Well, uh, then as years goes by, when I was eight years old, I learned in school already how to grab fruit trees and grapes. Is that I was it? doing that for the people. Oh. Then... You did that back there in Yugoslavia? Yeah. Is that right? Wait, what, what was, was your... I was in Yugoslavia there then. Oh, what was Austria. it called? Austria. Oh. Yeah. What village were you born in? Bushinia was. Well, that's what I was supposed to tell you to begin with. Yeah, we're... That uh, I was born and all that, okay. born in Bushinia was, and the country was Austria. You know, it was Austria at the time. Yeah. Oh. Well, then my brother had a clock, and he was going to throw it away. Both. I told him, you know, around eight years old. I, I asked him, give, give me that clock. Uh -huh. give, me the, give me it. And I went and I took it apart and I looked and see what was wrong with it. The thing that rocks in, in, in the, you know, one pin was broke. Oh. So I went and I took that thing out. And I put common, common pin, pit in there just right. Oh. Small piece. Mm -hmm. I just cut it. The right link, same as the other one. Put it back together. That clock was, was good, as good as new. Was that like a. It was, was going off for, for a long time. Was that like a wall clock? Then, then that, people find out I could, I could fix that clock. Uh -huh. They were bringing me from all over. Oh. Including the uh, father club, they bring him in. How old were you at this time, Pop? Eight. Huh? Eight. eight years old. He said eight years old. Yeah. Well, you were a businessman at eight, huh? Yeah. Did How you, much uh, money did they give you? I charged him ten cents to fix the car. Oh. <laughs> That's it. Right. Yeah. Back then, that wasn't bad, huh? That, that was good money. That was good money. Well, uh, it didn't cost me nothing. Yeah. Most clocks. Need a little oil. Yeah, first thing when they, when I when they bring it over, I look in there if anything was broke. If nothing was broke, all we need is I use kerosene and a few drops of oil. With better you know, I, when I grease it all up, good score. Good as gold. Brother, how many brothers and sisters did you have, Pop? Well, I had two uh, two brothers and three sisters. They what were their there. names? And they were all here in this country. Mm. What were their names? Well, my oldest brother was John, then uh, Martin, then the uh, sisters are Barry, Barbara, and Kate. Yeah, they were all here. Now, are they are they here now? No, no, they're all they're dead. All dead. They're, they're, they died. Were but they, they were, they came here and lived here, huh? But yeah. to begin with, I was going to tell you a story. My trip from Europe this way. Uh-huh. Uh, but my mother followed me till I got to the uh, taxi to go, go toward the barn. And she says goodbye, so I'll never see you again. But first, when I die, 
first thing I'll do, I'm going to come over to see you. And when I was sleeping there, wasn't sleeping, just like uh, in bed. At Aunt Katie's the, house. You know, yeah, by Aunt Katie's house. That's where I was, uh, I moved to. Uh -huh. In Joliet. Yeah. Something just throw like a, a, a sheet, cover me all up. <coughs> I kick it, kick it off. I told my sister about it. She said, well, maybe my mother must have died. And when we got, she got the letter from, from them, that was exactly the day she died. When did you have that feeling, in bed at night? Yeah. No, before dinner was being served. He came home from work, oh. and he went to bed, just laid on top of the sheets. Uh -huh. yeah. There was nothing over him. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, he remembers that. Well, yeah. um, uh, you, were, how, uh, huh? you what? were the baby of the family, weren't you? Yeah. Now, yeah, what you was your baby. mother's name? My mother? Yeah. yeah. Barbara. What it, was her maiden name? Uh, Krauschewitz. 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 How do you spell that? You know, I you don't ever... know. Okay. How about Grandma? And, uh, uh, well, when time comes to go to this country, there were two other guys from the same village who wanted to go. So three of us went together. Mm -hmm. But we didn't know how the hell we were going to cross the border. How old were you at this time, Pop? When you decided 16. 16 years old, you're going to come yeah. to America. Yeah. So, so this is the trip of how you came to America. Yeah. Well, when uh, I wrote letters, one, one, one of my buddy, my friend, went to, to uh, Ljubljana, to, uh, you know what the, uh, that, Ljubljana is Slovenian capital. And they have colleges and all that stuff. If you want to uh, uh, learn any kind of trade, you got to go there. So this, my friend, was up there. I don't know what he was trade. He was making carpenter or, or shoemaker. I don't know what. Anyhow, I told him when, when, when I figured out go go to this country, I'm going to go through the blog. Because I knew they could get pinched if you didn't have passport. And you know, how the hell are you going to get passport? For what? So, he, he write to me, just because I told him we was going to go, he said, all right, you, when, you, uh, when you get to that lower, there's a small seaport, get off of that train there. A small town like Rockdale up Bill Joliet. They didn't check you then. But if you go on to the Blana, the police gonna check everybody and if you didn't have passport, your bitch it ship you back home. Well, back what, home. what town was that? Huh? What town was that where you could get through without your without a passport? What town? Yeah. The Blana. Oh that was your Blana. Okay. Well, anyhow, uh, uh, we, when, we, we, when we got to that small town, we got off the train and that guy was waiting for us. Oh, okay. The, uh, uh, my friend. He said, all right now, he said, we're going to go on streetcar all the way through the Vlada. Went through the middle of the Vlada. Uh, it's a great big city, you know. Beautiful. Can't throw paper on the ground he, there. He, he did her there. Then, then, then he told us, <laughs> now we're going to go out of the Blana, out, and get yourself a ticket direct to Paris. And buy it, cost you a couple of dollars more, but that, 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 that special train won't stop in Germany. Just go right slow all the way to Paris, we'll have no trouble. So we went, uh, we did that. We went up there, we bought that ticket, and 
when we got on train, a good train, when we got into Germany, the train, uh, our train tried to slow down, slow, didn't go fast because there was all the other trains were, uh, were there. Uh, look, train right here was stopped. Even German soldiers uh, uh, or police were checking everybody for fast. If you didn't have pass, you're pinched. That's how strict Germany was. Anyhow, uh, uh, this, our train didn't stop. When we got out, out, out a little bit, they started to go out full speed, all the way into uh, uh, to Paris. And when we got off the train in Paris, some Slovenian guy was over there. You, you people go to America? I said, yeah. He said, come with me. I'll, I'll, I'll fix you up with ticket. So we went, he took us, we went with him. And we changed all our money all, uh, to American money. Mm -hmm. See? How much money was that, Pa? How much money did you have? Well, I have hundred American dollars. Hundred dollars is what you have. Hundred dollars. That Aunt Katie sent to you, right? Yeah, she my, I, I write to my Aunt Katie. Your sister. To my sister. You can't travel that cheap nowadays, Pa. Huh? You can't travel that cheap nowadays on a hundred dollars. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. You didn't take a jet, huh? <laughs> that was back when you get it. Uh, you get four shots for five cents. Uh, and now, so you got your tickets, huh? Uh, Daddy, what did it cost you for when your we tickets? Got it, when we got over there, we bought the ticket. Mm -hmm. And, and we, uh, we want to go on French line. They had just good, the best boat, boat uh, uh, and fastest there is. Mm -hmm. that, that, that boat's supposed to cross the ocean in five days. And, That's fast. Uh, that is fast. We were told that we can't get it. The tickets were all sold out. So he says, this guy that uh, he, 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 this Slovenia guy was with us. He says, the only thing you can do now is go on English line. Uh -huh. But English line is way too early. You, you got eight days yet before that boat is going to go. So he says, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You, you, you got your, your, your ticket made up. I mean, paid. All the way to Joliet. See? And uh, uh, he says, no, you, you have to go to a hotel here for, for about four days. Mm -hmm. He come around with four days was up and said, now, uh, get on train again and all the way to English Channel. Well, we got on that boat, small boat in English Channel, to cross over to England. I will never forget we got over there and the train stopped for a couple of minutes. We didn't even get off of that train, but I see girl was ice skating. It's, I mean, uh, roller skating on the sidewalk, and she makes awful flip. <laughs> he must have got hurt or something. This, you that's remember? what I saw. <laughs> Was this wow. summertime? Was this summer when you come over? Well, uh, in May. May? Yeah. Uh -huh. how uh, much, do you remember how much your ticket cost to come over here? Oh, but uh, I would say out of that $100, I had $25 of my own money. Uh -huh. See? So it cost about seventy-five. Uh, 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 no. uh, it cost about eighty-five dollars. Oh. All, All right. of it from from Paris to here to Joliet. Wow. Was that food too? Huh? Was that food too? For food? That include your food? Yeah. They, everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. Was this like a On both days they serve food. Yes. So. Now this was about nineteen ten or eleven, right? No, this was 1912. 1912, okay. Yeah. Okay. No, 13. 1913. 1913. All right. The reason I write, when I write to my sister to send them money for tickets, I said, the war is going to be 
it's brewing, uh, we're going to have war. But the next year, uh, 1940, was war. Oh. World War. World War I. World War I, yeah. See? Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, we went, when four days was up in, in, in France, we crossed the English line, then uh, then uh, we were told to go to a hotel, not a four days. Mm -hmm. We had to wait for the boat. Uh -huh. And uh, when that time came up, we went on, on that big boat, with over 2,000 people on it. Wow. Adriatic was the name. Now those were all people coming over to live here, huh? Yeah. Adriatic was the name. The of the Adriatic. Boat. Yeah, Adriatic. How many? How many? Did you have a suitcase or any? Uh, huh? belong, did you bring a suitcase with you? No suitcase, nothing. Just yourself, huh? Yeah. Oh, you couldn't even huh? couldn't bring anything with Anyhow, you. Anyhow, the sister lived here. Uh, the family lived here. We wait for those four days. Yeah. Then we were told to go. Now, where was your father at the time? My father, huh? We was we was back there and mother. Oh, your father, and mother. Were, okay. What, what was your father's name? Huh? What was your father's name? Jacob. Jacob. Yeah. Okay. What kind of work did he do, Pa? Who? Your father was he a farmer? No, he a farmer and he cooked whiskey for people. He's got that boiler. I mean, uh, it, the the system is over there when you. Uh, everybody grow a lot of plum. It was plum, you know, that you could make whiskey out. Of. Oh, okay. See? And he grew all that for them, for different people. And they pay him so much. So so he was, he, he like uh, ran his own little uh, brewery. Yeah. Okay. And uh, now you take, we, we got on that boat. Yeah. They serve. They start serving din dinner. Mm. Mm. Gary and Gulas they had, and that was boy, that was delicious meal. That was good. They they had good I cooks was, on the I, boat, you know, huh? Because I I was so hungry, we didn't have not eat all day there in right. our hotel. Right. Did they give us that? But that's where I make mistake. We eat too much. Oh, you ate too much on the boat? Yeah, because when, when they could be, there were, say, about 500 people each at one, one time. Then and when those get off, then another group go back, go in. So I just, I was, I, I, I liked that food so that much. I got tangled about that second group. we back in uh, at second dinner. <laughs> That's what I... That oh, Hungarian my, goulash, huh? Well, I don't, I, I pay for that. I didn't eat nothing. Uh, I thought I'd die. I, I, I got seasick. Uh, now you got seasick then, right? Yeah. yeah. All that goulash. And then with all that goulash on top. Oh. Double, I was just heaving up for four days, four nights. Uh -huh. Then, uh, it, it took, what, six days to cross, I know. And around four, fifth day, I only see birds flow, those eagles, those eagles. eagles were flying. And uh, then band started to play and they were dancing and everything on the main floor. And we, we pulled over to New York, to, to near New York. We couldn't get off the boat. We happened to be on, the got in there on Sunday. On Sunday, they, they won't let you off. Was this at the Statue and of Liberty? They made that the next day. Was this at the Statue of Liberty? Yeah, that's where we went. Uh, Castle Garden, they call it. A big, big boat. You go on a little bitty boat, take it to Castle Garden. Over there, they gave, the doctors give everybody strict. Physical. 
physical fact, uh, examination. You strip all your clothes. The one with, with any kind of sickness, back they go. You wouldn't accept it. Back on the boat? Huh? Yeah. Back on the boat? Yeah. Well, no, who paid for the trip back? I don't know, but they, that's uh, that, uh, that's what they did. Oh. Some would cry and uh, yeah. come down there. Well, yeah, well, I passed. And those other two guys wouldn't be passed. What were your two, guys, you, your two friends' names? Huh? What were your two friends' names? Do you remember? Who's two? Who's you said what you... were the men's names that were with you, the boys? Oh, I don't know. I don't okay. remember. Okay. Yeah, I forgot. They, they, did they come to Joliet too? No. Oh. So when we got through with Castle Gardens and go on a small boat, take you to the shore, and you get on the tra train. But before we went at the Castle Gardens, they were selling boxes, you know, food, a dollar, for a dollar. It was sandwiches in there, some. Uh, salami sandwich and sardines and cookies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That is uh, because they you they know that on train if you go a long ways you can't get nothing there on train. So you oh. they bring your food along, along with you. Oh, they didn't they didn't serve food on the train. Yeah, well I know. Uh, in New York. Those, those tickets that I bought in, in Paris, they just keep on taking them off. There were a couple, of, uh, two of them left. So, yeah. uh, first thing you know, they holler Chicago. When we got off to Chicago, uh, they be all got split. I went to Joliet, the other one went to, uh, to Wisconsin or somewhere up there, one to California. Mm -hmm. So we were split there. Mm -hmm. And uh, right in a deep one, man said, you sit down there, wait till the train comes. And for some reason, uh, somebody said, you know, and I sit there and wait, and wait. The first thing you know, I see one one train stop there. I went right out of that bumper on the train. Good, good thing it was right train. <laughs> uh, and uh, well, when I sit there, another guy come being on the train, sit right alongside of me. Hey, you 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 just came to this country, huh? I said, yeah. Where are you going? I told him to Joliet. He said, that's a Morocco. And what street? So who you go to? Oh, I told him my sister's name and address, Elizabeth Street. Oh, hell! I said I live one block away from them. That was not a book I had. So he went right on with him. Yeah. Oh, that was good. We got off, uh, off the deep way, Joliet. We walk all the way down. He showed me, here's the St. Joseph Church on Chicago Street. Oh, I'll be there. Slovenian. Yeah. Go all the way up for Now, did you meet anybody uh, that you knew, anybody, any Slovenian that you knew on the way home, on the walk home? No. No. Now, you walked from the train station all the way to Elizabeth Street, right? Yeah. He, he got off at the train station downtown. Yeah. They walked all the way up Chicago well, Street. That was no transportation. Yeah. But that it was, was my idea. Then, huh? If uh, if I that didn't happen, if I was alone there, get off the train in Georgia, I go for look for taxi. Could Order you, taxi. Could you speak any English? Yeah, that's no. Oh. Well, I, I had uh, all I had. Do we tell the guy, uh, taxi cab driver, what the what, what is that I see. What so language do you speak? You, you just spoke Slovenian, Slovenian then, huh? Yeah. It, how many no. years? How many years did you go to school back in in uh, Slovenia? Uh, in oh, Austria? Oh, around 
grade. Eighth grade. Eighth grade, yeah. How did you learn English, Pa? Just pick up over oh, here. Oh, I pick up English quick. I went to school there, too. You went to school but here? My, my first job was just I, when I got here. Very next day, I went out to look for a job. Mm -hmm. I went over to look for a job at Seabim. Mm -hmm. A guy was there, and I asked, how about a job? He said, how old are you? I even lied for one year. I said, 17. We don't hire nobody under 80. You have to be not a year before you come over. Mm. But you know, at that time, steam mill, they were paying dollar seventy-five cents a day for twelve hours. Is that boys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, hard uh, work, hard labor. My cousin was working at the uh, Higgy's boiler shop. He said, Joe, he come over to my to Kate. He said, you come over to Higgy's. I'll get you that job. I'll get you a job. Who was that then? Huh? Your, that was who? Your cousin? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Gersich. Yeah. What was his name? Gersich. Gersich. Well, I was over then, uh, in that, to, to Higgy's boiler shop. Yeah, they hired me around me. I would have, the guy was punching the plates, you know, on the key. That uh, would happen for a couple of days. I do that. They advanced me to run the machine. It was ten cents more. See, Higgies was better than Steamil. They pay us for eight hours. We worked at eight hours instead of twelve. Mm. For eight hours, a dollar and ninety cents a day. Mm. But believe me, they were sick. You better work every minute you're, you, of, of, of it. No loafing, no smoking, even plates of steel. No so you waste time smoking. No coffee breaks? Yeah. <laughs> uh, nothing. You get lunch? But they give you a dollar and ninety cents a day. Uh huh. But when I got promoted to run the machine, I got ten cents more. Oh, okay. Two dollars a day. Well, this went on. I stayed down there for about two years. And I walked, you know, where that border shop was, you know, where that uh, rail, Jackson Street, the railroad bridge is, way, way out there, right near that bridge, oh. on the east side. Uh -huh. Walk. Yeah. To work. And and then later on, I got myself back. Of course, I, uh, the money I, my sister g gave me, I pay her off every payday, a little bit. Board was, I think she, she got 18 out a month. And then I give her whatever I could, 10, 15 dollars. So I left a couple of dollars for my own expense, see. Uh, then I figure after a couple of years, uh, I figure I ain't gonna go no place this way. I wanna, uh, I wanna make some money that I'd be able to build, build a house and live American way. Well, my brother was molder at. More store. Mm -hmm. You don't remember where that where that place was. That big shop was over there. Where, uh, uh, the name of the stores. Yeah, on the east side. I don't know. So how they they were they were busted. And how they. Were. I asked my brother. I said, "How could he?" He was making around eight, eight, ten dollars a day. Oh, just a minute, Grandpa. I asked my brother, I 
I said, how about a job in a store? All right, come on down, I get you a job. I did. And that was a damn hard job. The mud, you know, they have all over, long face mud. You have to get out, get down at 6 o'clock in the morning. You mix all that up, that mud. At 7 o'clock, you start them. They, those boxes they had, the pattern, you know, where you you put that money and you put pattern in, cover it with, all the way down here. I was working with not a guy that first day. Next day, they put me alone. So I hell, I worked like a son of a gun. I put out more more than any old timer. So when when payday come along, a dollar seventy five cents a day. I went to right away to foreman. I said, hey, how come that I I'm getting only dollar seventy five cents? And those guys are getting around eight, ten dollars a day. He said, you have to stay uh, on that job like uh, for that uh, for that wages for four years before you could join the union. When you join the union, then you get that high price. Oh, oh, oh. I said, to hell with you and end the job. I quit. Well, good for you. So I had a friend that worked at uh, Finnish Horseshoe Company, see? And uh, I asked him, I said, is it possible to get a job down at the Horseshoe? See, that was not a union shop. Uh -huh. Well, he said, you can come down, but don't stop on front gate because there will be hundreds of them looking for a job. And it was on winter time in January, cold. Mm -hmm. But those people they were all lined up there for a job. Mm. That guy told me, so you go right around the bay down the other side for it. The, the small shop, Cooper shop, they used to call it. You go over the fence and come right into the shop. He described me where to go. He said, if, it, if they're short of men, super talent is not going to go through that cold weather and snow two feet deep. Mm -hmm. You make your chances, you're getting hired. So I did that. I've been in the shop and I've watched them roll the iron, standing there, and here comes Superton. His name was Bonnie Bailey. Oh, I'll never forget his name. Bonnie okay. Bailey? Yeah. Barney. Oh, Barney Bailey. Barney Bailey. Uh, yeah, I was standing there, and he comes along. He looked at me and said, what do you do? We're looking for a job? I said, yes, sir. Take that job right there. Uh, Sherman was cutting those, those bars, you know, yeah, that big, when, with all the pattern in on there. And all I have to do with the flat shovels, pick it up there, put it on the wagon, the wagon is full, push it out and get another empty one. And that job paid dollar seventy five cents a day. Yes. But I didn't stop there. Uh -huh. Then during the war, Russia <coughs> ordered five million dollars worth of fortune. Mm. They, then they then they tried to get, uh, get night crew to work. There was five trains on daytime, then one more at night. And Luke Benedict, I don't know if you knew him or not. No. He used to be on, live on Broadway Street. He know. was he was superintendent of the crew. 
Well, anyhow, Barney, uh, when the superintendent come home when I was working, that, that same night they supposed to start that night train. Mm -hmm. I asked, I says, Mr. Barney, I says, how about that job stick yet? Can you do it? I said, I certainly can. All right, he says, you work till noon, go home, and come back at 7 tonight. All right, I did that. When I come over, Luke says, who's going to speak here? And I says, I am. What the hell do you know about it, he said. <laughs> I said, look, Luke, how did you learn? You have to, somebody has to give a chance chance to learn. I said, I could do it. I, I, I'll learn. And I, it was rough, but I tried and I did it. You were aggressive. Yeah. And anyhow, that job paid around $4 a day already. It was a big jump from dollars to 75 cents a day. Oh, yeah, that's a good, that's a good increase. Then, later, this is how, the, how it worked. The five trains are on daytime, that one at night. Then if some get sick or or quit or change the job or die, then then that last one is made. So uh, I was sticking in, stick in that job for about three months. Here comes the catcher job. Mm -hmm. Higher up, I would I took I got that job. That one paid on, uh, first of all, it was around four and a half. That one was around six dollars a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On average, because uh, you were getting paid by the ton. That's where the they put the bars through the rolling mills and you catch yeah. them with the tongs. Yeah. And, and then you, you pull them through and then you, you feed them back in. They, cut, they keep on breaking them down and yeah. smaller and smaller, right? Mm -hmm. That's hard work. So, yeah. Oh. I, I watched that. At, at uh, work where I used to work, they used to do that mm -hmm. at Hawthorne. They used to do then, that uh, manually. Hot, hot, then, hard uh, work. Another, another three months went by, I got a rough one job. Uh -huh. What I must be, I was making around twelve to fifteen dollars a day on that job, and dollar, labor was still dollar seventy-five cents. Mm -hmm. You see, I stay on that job for eighteen years. Yeah. Did you get married then while you were on that job? Oh, yeah. I, uh, I got married. How, how did you meet? Uh, how did you meet my mother? How did you meet Mom? Oh, well, I meet her. You know, we used to have clubs down there, the Turks and all, all the motor we had, the motorcyclers, you know. There was about six of them. And they had a club right near the house. <laughs> Did you have a motorcycle? Yeah. Oh, you were a motorcycle. A game. Oh, yeah. We, we, we. <laughs> I didn't know that. I had my motorcycle. Did yeah. you? Oh. Wait, the you only the race track, only, only concrete street was, you know, we, up there in Crest Hill, where Boston store was. From there, halfway to Plainfield. They were experimenting that rose for, I don't know. With concrete? Yeah, I was going to work concrete grow. Oh. Now we went over there, and there was nobody, nobody on the road, no cars, no nothing. We went out there riding a race motorcycle. Ah, <laughs> Did you ever win? Boy, Grandpa. Oh, yeah. You won? And he used to tell me how dangerous this racing was. Yeah. Now the truth comes out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought that was supposed to be dangerous stuff. Well, uh, Did my mother go with you? Go where? <laughs> motorcycle races? Well, I didn't have no motorcycle when your mother, when I was, uh, that was when I had motorcycle when I was single. Oh. oh okay. When we started to go together, I, yeah, okay. I uh, <laughs> stole that motorcycle. Uh -huh. Started saving money because uh, we, we, we were engaged. Really? See? So, I had around fifteen hundred dollars saved up already. Then, yeah. Uh, then we will figure out getting married. Now, did you have did you have your first house then? 
What? Did you own your first house before you got married? Yourself? Yeah, you we bought? built that before we got married. You built that? I was going to tell you that. Mm -hmm. I will come to that. Oh, okay. Uh, we were looking for rent. We couldn't get a decent rent, no place. So I told my my wife, I said, look, I'm going to buy a lot, build a house, and build a house, and spend it, then we're going to get married. She agreed with it. Is that exactly what I did? I had $1,500 or more a lot. Uh, not for furniture. Then the uh, build a house. Them days were cheap. I only borrowed three thousand dollars. It cost me around, I think, three thousand five hundred dollars to complete it, complete that house. Jeez. Yeah, you see what I mean? Things were cheap. Yeah. And that was at 1108 Highland Avenue. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, do you remember when that was? What year you built that one? What year did, did they build that house? 1921. 21, huh? Yeah. Now, who, who was the contractor? Huh? Who built that house? Oh, some guy by the name Groom. Groom? Groom. Room? He's dead. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I know. It's a nice home, huh? And then uh, the house was finished. But here's another stuff else I'm going to tell you. Uh, then one year it was flu. Uh, I got it badly. Oh. And uh, I didn't know uh, some 69 people lived, died all yet from that flu. Wow. When was that? What year? That was uh, 1921. Oh. How old was he? Yeah, and my doctor come in and he, he just give me some kind of pill with a little, a little half a glass of milk a day. He said, take nothing else. So your mother come over, she stay there, take care of me, and Katie got, got food too. So take care of both of us. So I told her, I had a, a, a made a little wine. Everybody was making wine. So I had a little wine made up down, down the basement. Okay. I told her one day, I said, go down there and boil some of that wine and put some cinnamon in and bring it here red hot, real hot. She did. When I started sip, sipping, first thing you know, I could feel like ants were crawling, crawling around me. She, uh, blood began to wakening up. See? I feel better. Hmm. What kind you of wine was day, that? Next day I told her, I said, I'll tell you what. You go down there and get a chicken and cook that chicken and give me hot soup, real hot chicken soup. When I did that, my God, I feel like uh, uh, I was all right. I got out of bed, walk around, a doctor told me. He said, hey, 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 what are you doing? You want to die? I said, you should be in bed. Why oh, should I feel good? <laughs> Medicine, you were a good medicine. I didn't tell. This <laughs> medicine is <that> bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
and since that time, that's what they, they claim is the best thing for you, is, yeah. is chicken soup and, and a little... And homemade wine. A little homemade wine, right? <laughs> there was that pill and glass of mug that helped me. See, that wine wakes me up and then chicken soup builds you up. Yeah. And uh, two days, two did, more days after that, I went back to work. Did, did you learn, did you remember how to make wine from your dad when you were back home? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He taught you how to do that, huh? Yeah. He got drunk on it when he was a little boy. Yeah. You got drunk on that wine when you were at home? Mm -hmm. When you were little? Tell them about how your dad wanted you to watch this, the, the vat, the, the big thing. Remember you told me your dad had you watch where the whis the wine was boiling? No, it wasn't, wasn't wine, that was whiskey. Or whiskey, yeah. yeah. Tell Jim about that. Yeah. Well, he had a building there on the side. So, say you half a block away from home. And mother told me, he says, go and tell, tell your father to come over for supper. So I went over there, you know, it was already dark. Because uh, they... Well, anyhow, I told him that, that mother wants him home. So, all right. He said, you just... Don't have to bother with fire or nothing. Everything is all right. Uh, water is boiling and whiskey is coming out. Just sit, sit here and watch. <laughs> I did. And first thing you know, I figured that whiskey, I'm going to taste it. <laughs> but when whiskey run out, you know, uh, I got a glass. I got, I got, I got a glass glass, and that was that was like poison. That just come out of water, a hot whiskey. <laughs> but then I took another one. When my father come, I didn't say nothing to my walk out. I was wobbling around, and it, and it was raining. And I fall down right on, right on, on by some building there. Oh, oh. Water, water come down from the roof right on top of me. I was like that. And he fell under the building. He slipped yeah, underneath. Yeah, and then they, got, they, they looked for me all over the whole neighborhood. Everybody was looking for him <laughs> because of heavy rain and yeah. there was a lot of water. You're lucky, you're lucky that water didn't rush in with you and you and, drowned or uh, something. Jeez. Uh, my brother finally find me. I was laying there. And he grabbed me by the head and pulled me down. It wasn't too far near the house, you know. <laughs> it was only a little base. And I was laying there in bed for a long time. <laughs> I didn't go to school or nothing, but my mother take care of me like. How old was How old, what? Did they How old, old were you? How old you then? Well, uh, maybe seven. Seven years uh, old? Six or seven. seven. Yeah. <laughs> did they know he was drunk? Or did oh, they yes. Know? Okay. Yeah, they knew. They didn't think he was just stuck. Did you, did, well, uh, did you get a whooping for that? <laughs> no, I didn't. No? You no. were too sick, huh? Yeah, they were just happy to have you back, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And my father, when he got through, what a, he gave each one of the family a bottle of whiskey <laughs> to put it away. Keep for like for it. Each one got keep it for himself. Yeah. Well, I didn't touch that whiskey for uh, 10 years after that. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff aged, huh? <laughs> he gave it to his brother. Oh, yeah. Didn't you? Didn't you give yours to your brother? Huh? Did you give yours to your yeah. brother? Yeah. yeah. The one that pulled you by the hair, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to um, United States. You, uh, you got the house done, and then you got married to my mother. Yeah. How old were you, and how old was my mother? 
Oh, she was only 18 and I was 25. What was her maiden name? Who? Mar Margaret. Mar Margaret, yeah. Gregorich? Yeah. Yeah. And her, her mother's name was Catherine? Yeah. Do you remember her maiden name? No. no. And what was what was uh, my mother's uh, father's name? Uh, oh, uh, his name was Mike. Mike? Yeah, me. Oh. Gregorich. Mike were they from here? Yeah. And what? were they from uh, Austria, too? That's right. Yeah, they're... Did... did Everybody in all times uh, that comes here before, first of all, first of all, World War, they we were all under Austria. Croatians, uh -huh. Slovenians, and all that. Serbians were there. They was, that was their own country. Mm -hmm. they, they, they were by themselves. Uh -huh. And they were the ones that caused, started that First World War. Serbians? Serbians. Yeah. See, some big second from uh, Sanya, uh, uh, Franz Joseph is, is, is the big wheel, yeah. he's the president. And the second one for me is from General, went over to see Serbia, down to uh, Belgrade. Belgrade is their main big city for Serbia. He went over there over the bridge, and Serbians, when he had a bomb underneath, they blow up that bridge, but that guy went over, and he, oh. he got killed. <laughs> then that started the whole damn world with the war. One declared war against another, oh. you know. Because he blew that bridge up, huh? Yeah. Now that was Fran France? Yeah, yeah. France Joseph. Yeah. Okay. First World War. Okay. Uh, then you had three children. Yeah. yeah. Joe was the oldest. Yeah. Then Jimmy. Jimmy and you. And me. I was the baby. Yeah. Yeah. And Jimmy got killed in World War II. Yeah. And Joe died in 1989. That's right. Yeah. And, and what about Margaret? And my mother died when she was 51 years old of cancer. Yeah. Or 49 years old, wasn't 49? she? 49 years 49. old. 49. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I was um, 10 or 11 years old when mm. she died. Yeah. She, she suffered a lot. That was, uh, that was right. breast cancer? Yes. Four upper, three operations in that last. Well, I went on an operation too, remember? With yeah. gallbladder, I was That's in the right. hospital. Oh, you had the gallbladder? For 28 days. When did you have your gallbladder up? And, uh, my, uh, Joe come over to, to see me in the hospital and they bring Chicago to do my paper. It says, Medicine where this hundred hundred percent proof cancer uh, for cancer hundred percent proof for cancer that will, will cure you. Well, they they, had, they thought they had a medicine they were for cancer. supposed to be invented in Yugoslavia hmm. from horses up. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Huh. So, Joe, my son, bring me that paper when I doctor come in every day and I was home. I said, look, doc, here, can you can you take my my wife to this hospital? Oh, you can't do it. Do you have enough medicine? I said, you will you. Because his name was Smullett. I said, you're from Chicago. He was out in Chicago, but he opened his office here in Joe mm -hmm. hey, I, I said, you, 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 you try to get her up there. Uh, 
he said, oh, the next day he come along, he said, well, I can make connection up there. You can, you can take his son, your wife up there to that hospital. That's, um, Me Carborini Memorial Hospital. That's right up near Lincoln Park. Cabrini. In that town. I'll bet, right? Is that Mother Cabrini? Yeah. Oh. So, Joe took her up there. I was, I was in with my when I took operation on the gamble of all the, I was in the hospital for 28 days. Yeah. You were at the golf when I got out. The same time she had uh, breast cancer. And when I got out of the hospital, I tried to go up there every Saturday. On Saturday, my day off. And I took Jane with me on every time we went up there. Yeah. And I had a hard time. Uh, my pain, when you have your gallbladder taken out, you feel, I feel the pain, we pain in there for two years. Well, we went up there, you remember, I, I couldn't make the trip all the way up to the south. I stop for a little while and get myself straight now then get on car again. Did my dad drive? Did he, did my Sometimes dad drive? Sometimes your dad took me up there, uh, I know. Yeah. yeah. How long was she up there? She was up there three different times and it was usually, it was major surgery each time. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course I was a little girl, but it seemed like maybe a month at a time. Is that about right? Maybe. About a month yeah. each time. Mm -hmm. That was rough. Yeah. Well, uh, that's history, you see. Now, when, when I was working in that Finnish horse company, I had my house already paid up, I don't know, five, six thousand dollars uh, on hand cash. And uh, your mother's father, he had a kind of a, his legs were that big must have cancer too. He was he was sitting like that and then legs out there another chair for, for seven years before he died. I was there one day and uh, Joe he said you got a job, a hard job just like I am. I'll give you a little advice. Money is not everything. Quit that job and get a get a healthier job. Get away from that uh, hard, uh, hard work you do. I listened to him. And now, uh, I, uh, I did a lot of work for them. I been even uh, paint their house, make new steps, fix the clock. Uh, no, not the clock. You know that uh, record players, you wind, you wind them days. You wind it. Spring was broke. I told him, oh, oh. I said, I'm going to try to fix that thing. Uh, that thing won't ever run again. I took it all apart, took the spring out. Right there were holes in you know, there, that was broke. And when I got a hot in it, I punched a hole in there, and I make another hole just like that. Put it back in together, put it in go, so I'll be there. But he told me, he says, look, I I was told, same way when he said, when he was working down the wire you know, handled that. Uh, the wire was soaked in line. He had to go in as a hot line. Uh, and some old timer told me, he said, Joe, you better get away from that job or you're going to feel it when you get older. Yeah, I told him, I said, ah, I'm the strongest bull. Not, nothing is going to happen to me. Well, you see what happened? Now all I do is look out through the window and I will never put a foot on the street. 
uh, more done. So I did. We had a club up there near my house on, on the Highland Avenue. And they elected me for president. Oh, hold on a minute. They, uh, at the club, members asked me to drop a piece of Slovenian. That was when the Rosa was run for president and Horner for governor. What year was that? What year? That was, that was, uh, let me see. Uh, it must be 19, 1933. 33. But, yeah. Okay. That's when, uh, the pressure was on before that. Uh-huh. The pressure where they closed all the banks. Oh, yeah. Everybody, including me, I lost $2,000. Like Mm -hmm. Hoover was president, mm -hmm. the Republican. So, I run for precinct committeeman, and then, uh, there were three of us in the race. Me, and uh, some Polish guy that you, that was precinct committeeman, run for second or third term, and some Irish by the name White. So I went, I got my card printed. My name, Joseph Benedict, for precinct committeeman. But printer didn't put, put party on, Democratic Party. So I was just passing those tickets to everybody. The Irish come along, the white. Oh, you're crazy. You spend money for all this junk. You haven't got a China more chance to get in. I says, I, I don't care, I'll just try my best. Then in the evening when they start counting the ballots, I was in there, uh, and it's white and the other guy. First they put the Polish name on, uh, when they count the ballots off, then his name, he starts to spy it. Then things turn around in my name. Oh, jeez, what happened? Well, I had over 350 votes, and he only had six. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he walked out of the place. But that wasn't true yet. Yeah. And I got I got more votes than Roosevelt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not preaching. Isn't that something? Yeah, and not only that. I even beat the Republican preaching committee. You know, they, uh, there was no party on those ticket sites that I showed up to. So they, so they didn't know. They thought maybe I wrote for a, a Republican ticket, and they would beat him too. <laughs> I could have took, took either one, so, a Democrat or Republican. So that's a good secret, huh? Don't put a party yeah. on your, yeah. on your uh, so, ballot or on your... Literature. So this went on, that's on primary, see? So uh, if my, in my precinct, I wouldn't uh, cover a whole damn precinct by, by every house. You know, mm -hmm. ask us to vote, uh, vote Democratic. This is a we, we, uh, at that time, you, 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 nobody didn't have nothing. You know, the pressure, maybe, so somebody older would tell you what was going on. You couldn't get a hundred dollars for your whole house. Mm. No, no money, nothing. They, they, they just closed up all the banks. See, I was fishing at Lake Rambic, and not a guy from the Finnish Orchard Company. And some guy come along and said, hey, you guys got any money in the bank? Yeah. Better go out, so and so back, Joey and Federal Bank, yeah. Better go down there, pull out, they're going to close up tomorrow. See, we quit fishing right away, went, went down. And the guy that uh, I was with, she had $6,000 in there, and he drove all her out. In my 2000, 
I went by Duda. He was Slovenian guy. I said, his name was Joe Duda. I said, hey, I want to I want my money out. Oh, he said, you don't have to be afraid. This bank is solid as gold. You never gonna uh, uh, nothing gonna happen to this bank. He talked me talked me out of it. Very next day this closed up. See? That some? Yeah. It's terrible. That one so, guy really knew what he was talking about when he came uh, around warning. Anyhow, we, we let's go back to politics then. See. So how uh, long were when, you? When, 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 when preaching on springtime, it was preaching uh, uh, primary. When then you then he called election is re-election. See. That's when I went to work. But really tell people how things work. Well, I didn't have to tell them too much because everybody knew it. Yeah. Everybody lost everything. So I in my preaching you used to be a Republican preaching with three to one democratic. And then after the election was over, <coughs> I went down to see Tony Nemanic. See, there's a five patronage committee. It was uh, Tony Nemanic, Packard McFarlane, J.B. McCarthy, uh, and uh, Searing, and not one more. Five on patronage committee. So I went to see Tony. I said, you're looking for a job? I said, yeah, what kind of job? I said, state police. Huh? You haven't got a chance. Chance, more chance. I'll get you a job back in the, those holes on the highway, Wisconsin. <laughs> I said, the hell with you in that job? <laughs> so I went, I knew when, the, when they supposed to meet downtown in, in our hotel. I went uh, down a little ahead of time, I was standing there. Here comes J.B. McCarty and Patrick McFarlane. McFarlane. McFarlane come over early and said, Joe, you did a remarkable job. You did a good job in your place. Are you looking for a job? I said, yes, but I don't think I'm going to get it. Who say so? I said, I told him them and it's just blocking me. Forget about it. He'll go home you got the job. <laughs> that's how that was. That's how that was. <laughs> and that, that's how I got away from, from Walter then. Then you got, so you went uh, from precinct committeeman to state police, right? Yeah. You didn't have now, to go to school for state police? Did, did you, did you have politics, to? You know, I was there eight years then when the, when the, then when the public uh, governor was elected. Then Democrats, they put their own click in. Yeah. Now, uh, so, but they, they, they come over to see me and ask me to stay on a job. Well, I'm all right. You don't know, have to be. You won't be removed. From stay on the job. precinct committeeman? No. State police. State police. State police. Oh. I figured, I said, no, I got I got all I wanted. Eight years was up. No. Were you able to be precinct committeeman when you were state policeman or not? Yeah. You were still precinct committeeman? Yeah. How I can remember my mother taking me around with her. She'd get me all dressed up and curl my hair, and I had to be the good little girl. <laughs> we go knocking on doors for uh, your vote. Uh, That's what I remember that. Is that right? Um, well, I got it and felt sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> How long were you precinct committeeman? Eight years. Eight years. At eight years, state police, huh? Yeah, and then then I wow. then I got down to our sport, down the ammunition door, during that war, four years, in eight months. Um, and then, and then uh, when war was over, 
I when I got a job at, at the prison. Mm -hmm. Stateville Penitentiary. Yeah. Stateville, yeah. Now, did, did you, when you were in the state police, or when you were a precinct committeeman, yeah. uh, uh, you were in that for eight years. Yeah. Was that a part-time thing? That was huh? was that a part-time yeah. job? Yeah, you did it after. So you did that at, at, at night, huh? You worked on those. That, that was not far job, far job. You you stay in there all the way, all as long as your party is in. Right. But you were but, you could have another job besides that. That wasn't like a full time job. Right now, or something. Yeah. You were councilman like, huh? Is that is that like a councilman today? No. No. What's it like? Same as ever was. Uh, well, Preaching comedian. Um, what do you got? What do they have today? Nothing. Preaching comedian is <coughs> just if you're partying it either, uh, you might get some kind of job that you want. Like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did he get paid? It's no, did did no, you? Uh, no, no pay. Uh, no pay? Oh, no just, pay for you know, preaching? No pay. Get a good job out of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I so that helped you to get a job? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well. Dad, when you were on the state police, did you run into any bad criminals? Was that during I, the bootlegging days? I certainly did. Yeah. First, first, uh, first job was when Dillinger escaped. We, they Dillinger. sent us out. John Dillinger. John Dillinger. John Dillinger. To Indiana line and stop all the cars. I didn't know too much about my state police. I was just a couple of months after we, we got on. I figured, uh, listen, that is, uh, that, that's some order to st stop all the cars. And we knew that he he was equipped with machine gun <coughs> because he overpowered two, two cops in the end. Maybe not. Take take all all the uh, machine gun right. and the rifle. I said, well, if he, if he was out there somewhere, it was in my mind. If you block away, you see cops on the street, well, hell, he could kill you. Block away from there. I thought that was awful now. Because FBI works different game. They don't send men to, to, to get killed, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, uh, that was one job. We were there all night, yeah, nothing doing. So uh, they just give us order to quit. We didn't show, nobody show up. That was at the Indiana state yeah. line. So he got into Chicago or something. Uh, so the next, the next war, you know how FBI has got some women working. Undercover. You know? Undercover. Yeah. Women? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you take on this. Two of them on our television that you watch at night. Two of those girls are, every once in a while, they're, they're off for a week or two weeks. And, and one I remember, movie actor, I think she was in the general hospital. She said, I'm, I'm off now for two weeks, I'll go to, to Washington. You see? They got those women. Now here's how FBI worked. They knew that the guy, where the guy was. Well, they knew that he, he had a rifle and machine gun with him. So they sent this woman. She dressed up like a cleaning lady. So she goes, she walks there and, and, and then notify every day. Uh, what, what's going on to FBI. Mm -hmm. uh, she, uh, so the, this went on for a long time. She, 
готовит, и трассера понимать, говорю, Бервана, ту, 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 Couple of weeks that she was in. So he trusted her. He said, okay, we'll go. So in the evening they went, but she told FBI everything. This is what, what, what they got for. Mm -hmm. He said, now the FBI told her, I said, now when you get out of the tree, you drop the handkerchief and I know who's behind you. She did that, and I would just throw the hell out of him. He was gone. Oh, That's okay. how the FBI worked. They, they just that took him John out. That was John Dillinger huh? they killed, right? Yeah. They just took him out. They didn't They didn't try to arrest him or anything. Oh, they no, just took him right out. Them. She wore, <coughs> I read that there's a movie, she wore a red dress. Huh. That was a tip off. She said well, no, wearing. dropping the hanky, too. Well, but that, that was what that movie was about? Yeah. Jim, I had a lot of, lot of, a lot of things. I had a cop. They just hired a, a, a new cop, or they put him with me. He didn't know nothing but nothing. So we went down toward Wilmington, to the south from Joliet. Oh, maybe around now would have been a message to me. And he said, any, you know, we had a radio in the car to give us, to us messages. To any car patrol in 66 South from Joliet, look for so-and-so car. A license number and description with Chevy and we tell you, give you a license number. So, I told this guy about me. I said, look, now they just left Farniak now. Uh, from Farniak, uh, it'll take you, it'll take you 60 miles an hour, it'll take him at least 30 minutes to get there. Well, we got a lot of time. In 10 minutes, we were down the movement, and if we hear about you, right by the back, the, the stoplight, uh, and I told this guy uh, that was with me, you read first three numbers, I read the rest when they go by. This watch. We would have about five minutes or maybe 10 minutes. Here they come. They didn't even stop for us sometimes. Hmm. It wasn't. But, uh, we read our license number, all right. So I start that car and went after him. And uh, put a spotlight on, on him. He blows iron all the way. We were out on, on east edge of the town. They start to shoot. This guy with me says, hey, he put his head on behind the dashboard. He said, hey, Joe, they're shooting. Let them shoot. I said, you're done luck. You're police. We're going to go out to get them. Well, when they, when we stopped that car, uh, uh, they, they stopped this little, uh, maybe you remember where, where the creek is, on east side of Wilmington. There's a little bridge there. Oh, yeah. They mm -hmm. stopped on that bridge. We pull our, I pull up our car right behind them. They told this guy with me. Now, look, it was really dark night. Go down down low. When you get to their car, 
just tell them, get your gun ready and demand them to get their hands up and get out of the car. I did do the same thing on the other side. But for God's sake, don't shoot across the car and let them hit me. Yeah, <laughs> right. And the shooting's going to be done, I'm going to do All right. So, uh, we shake them down, didn't find no gun. There were three of them. But they were shooting and out then, the car. You know, here's the ruling of well, what the hell they're going to do when they, when, they need, when they need help on the highway. Anybody comes along in case like that, you have to stop and help officer. If you don't, you can make it pinched. Now, one guy could come all by himself. He was coming down toward Wilmington. I stopped that car. Hey, all these three guys down to Wilmington jail. Okay, just like that. I ordered them the one by one. Kid. And I went with him, with driver on the front seat. We went down to Wilmington and lock them up. Mm. And, I what? Said, and I asked you after they were locked up, I said, who, who, where did you see that car? He said, that's not the old car. He said, that belonged to my, my uncle. Oh, yeah. But in the meantime, uh, I listened to, to the message by the car outside, and uh, they give you all the information what happened. Mm -hmm. Says whatever you do, hold those three guys up. They're wanted by Chicago police. Oh. They stole that car in the garage. The people had had a new Chevy. And they put it back in there for checkup. You know, they stole the car. Mm -hmm. oh. I've been back in there. So you, you didn't tell me the truth, did you? You just stayed there for all this uh, jail, but I said, you keep me locked up. We'll be back some more. Mm -hmm. They, they chief come down to headquarters. I explained to him what happened. And we had it their car already by headquarters. We bring that car up here, so they were driving. Because we were told on radio that car was stolen. Yeah. So when we got through with that, we bring that, that car up here. Well. They were, what happened, they the way down in Pontiac, they tried to sell different things, like fans and, and uh, car radios and oh, so all they, kinds of stolen stuff, stuff, car loaded. So they, they, were, they didn't have no money, and they, they they, they tried to get gasoline, you know, for, for that stolen stuff. But the guy on, on the filling station notified police uh -huh. to check that car. So that uh, Pontiac was an area where they where they took a lot of car parts, uh, yeah, uh, stolen so was, uh, parts, and, and, and distributed them. Not a... When I go to Chicago and witness uh, you, every time you arrest something like uh, stolen cars and stuff like that, you have to go. Now, in one case, I, uh, we, we were van truck, uh, trucks. There were three of them, one on the van scale, one on the, one side of the highway, one on the other. See, truck, we shot over, 
get it, get it, get it made. And uh, cars, well, we check them a little bit for uh, stop lights or, or, or lights were, were burned or stuff. Anyhow, what we were doing with that, here, come on. It was gravel, gravel road on the side of the road. There was one car that drive in, he was going to pull back to turn, turn the, and go back. I dropped here and I run out to the car. Just by that time, he couldn't get away, you know, because his bumper got caught on barbed wire fence. So <laughs> while he was turning around. <laughs> well, just by that time, he, he jerked loose. Oh. I said, hey, where are you going? I said, oh, we thought you had an accident down there. We didn't want to be just, it was a woman, but me and my wife just went for a ride. We, we were going back. So now, wait a minute. What do you got in this car? I smell whiskey. Nothing. And his rear end was hanging down. It was a Buick car. And, and his, uh, his uh, inside was extended all the way to the front seat. He had 59 cans of whiskey. Jeez. Bootleg. 59 <laughs> five gallon cans. You know damn well that that that, uh, that 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 was just like truck. Yeah. But anyhow, I said, I ain't got nothing, I got no whiskey, no nothing. I said, come on. Now look, you open that trunk, I wanna see it. What you got in there. Hey nothing there. All right, I'm gonna knock that lock off. I'm going to shoot it off. <clears throat> so he went and he opened it and said, well, he said, look, he said, give, us, give me a break. Me and my wife just uh, got, uh, they, we, we got just a little money for this trip to go all the way to St. Louis with it. You can, I said, Who, who's out for this? He said, belong, belong. The Capone outfit. I said, look, you're talking to the wrong party, because he says, you can have this car, load, and name your price. You get it. You're looking for wrong, at the wrong party, and you're going in. I took it to the headquarters. FBI agents are always in every town at, at that time. So he, he checked it. It's all right. He said, good, good stuff. And uh, I asked. Uh, I asked the agent, I said, say, what are you going to do with the car? Oh, we'll keep that. He never get it back. Yeah. Keep car and all. But he said, whiskey, see, we're going to dump it. And I said, can I have a uh, one cat for rubbing alcohol? I got it. So you can have it. That took one camel. Didn't drink it, just used it like for robbing. Yeah. This was what during what they called the Prohibition, wasn't it? Yeah. What years was that about? Well, that was, uh, uh Prohibition was, uh, under the Hoover administration. The 20s, wasn't it? And the Roosevelt mm -hmm. were running on Whitfield at that point. But Roosevelt didn't take office until March. You see, they don't go with it. He didn't take off it in January. Yeah, wasn't it, was this in the early 1930s? Wasn't that the Roaring Twenties? No, 33. Oh, 33. Oh, 33. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, uh, the, 
after Roosevelt got in there, they didn't get the whole lot of stuff. We started brewing beer and everything. What over? But during the Prohibition, wasn't your run from Chicago to St. Louis? Well, what do you mean? Because I know that You're you had uh, uh, run-ins with the Mafia, didn't you? Where did you patrol? Where did you patrol? My patrol was from Joliet all the way down to down to Braidwood. Oh, okay. Uh, but I thought you ran into the bootleggers on 66? That's the road. That was on 66. That's yeah. where we, we, we were way in truck. I see. And now, uh, they took them. I had to go uh, after this was all over with. I got a notice to go all the way to St. Louis, Missouri, on business time. Mm -hmm. See the federal, federal, federal court. That's can have uh, their case in, in any city or any state. But I imagine the reason was because they was they say they was going to take it to St. Louis. Uh, mm. Were you driving a car then for the state police? I used a state car and I put your, your mother and Joe and Jim be all with them. Oh. And I <laughs> have a little vacation. Oh, that was good. Yeah, and they they pay me. Uh, they pay me for my uh, well regular wages. They didn't deduct me. And that was it's monthly pay. They didn't no deduction, but they then then you get for uh, your meals and everything around ten dollars a day. Mm. Didn't somebody try to bribe you? Why, well, yeah. That one said, when he said, officer, give us a break. You can have this load, truck, I mean, the car and whiskey and, and name your price. If you want $10,000, you get it. I said, you, you, you're talking to the wrong party. You're going in. I thought somebody offered you a, or a clothing store. What? Remember that clothing store in Chicago? Yeah. Wasn't that the mafia that offered you that? No. Yeah, I think so. You showed it to me. A clothing store? I think it was a clothing store. That you said that you it, you you didn't want to take it because it was the mafia. That they would probably kill you then. I don't know. Maybe I got it wrong. Yeah, we got it wrong. I don't remember yeah. none of that. What was your favorite job that you ever had? Out of all your jobs. See, police was the best job for for uh, it was a risky job. Because you'll never get bumped off any time. But it was still a job. I liked that book. It was exciting, huh? Yeah. It was a variety. It, I was just like Wally it was crazy, but racist. Uh -huh. Well, I was saying we were on the morning side. Yeah, I'm glad I got that on tape. I didn't want to ride the motorcycle. Really. Motorcycle, you use on a day like this, clear and warmed up. If it's raining, you use a squat bike. Uh -huh. And I had both. Uh, did you ride alone in this in a squad car, or did you have another guy you rode with? Uh, no, two officers uh, at night on the squad car. Oh, okay. Two. What was your partner's name? Cardwell. Yeah, at first, then uh, another one. White was the last one. I see. Say, Pop, do you remember telling me the story when you went to the police academy and the the uh, instructor was going to show you how to take a gun how to take a gun away from a guy? Remember, he had you come up there and he says, "Okay, 
pretend you've got a gun and you put it in my back, and I'm going to show you how to take the gun away. You remember telling me that story? I don't remember that. Sure you do. Everyone was going up trying to, like, take the gun away from the man at the school, at the police school, and you showed him how to do it. Remember you stuck your finger in his back? Yeah. And then, like, you, you had the gun in the other hand? You remember that? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty tricky. I remember he said that his Were you a good like shooter? That. Yeah. Weren't you a good shooter? Well, yeah, I still got mantled that at home. Yeah. A sharp shooter and expert. That's what Brian said he saw. Him. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're a good shooter. That. Um, let's see. When when you were on the state police. Um, did uh, did you have do you ever have to did you ever get into a, a gun battle with anybody? Uh, well, only police that I was only shot shot to be shot out was that one in Wilmington. Wilmington, the one I told, told you. Yeah, that yeah, right. right. Uh, that was that was your I, you know, just looking up. You never know. That was highway, that was your closest call, huh? That was your closest call. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a lot of interesting pictures. Yeah. With guns on the desk that you confiscated. Mm -hmm. Really good pictures. Mm -hmm. How about um, when you were at Stateville, Dad? You remember the fire they had there? Yeah. That was oh. in what, the mattress factory? Yeah. Okay, why don't you tell us about that? Well, that was, that was, that was, uh, I, I don't know how a comic saved my life in that choir. Uh, down in the, in the, uh, that factory was in the, in the basement. It's a great big building that they had the main floors, furniture factory. On, uh, and we were down below, and the stove factory was down on the other side. And uh, what they were doing, they they keep installing more and more machinery up up on the main floor, and main switch boxes were down the basement. But. Uh, they make around uh, 400 chairs for school. Then school rejected the order. They didn't like the, the way it was made up. It wasn't made the way they wanted. Like the school desks? Chairs, only oh, chairs. Just chairs? Yeah. So they, when they come back, they pile more up against the wall, but right behind with a big switch box. What's that damn stuff? I, I was right in the middle of the village's elevator. And I was standing by the elevator and looking around all over. My uh, crew was here, like on this side, from the elevator. And I looked down, I see sparks go in and start to fire. So I run to the telephone, notify him about the, about the fire. And I says, then I told every convict, drop everything and get out. Fire. Some did. Some run out of the way, and they went up. And a damn elevator that was a cheap convict elevator, he didn't want to come back down again. He was supposed to come back, but he didn't. So another two guys from soap shop, right there next to like next door neighbor, two guys come down. And I was running, and the smoke was really going, he couldn't see nothing no more. I run out there for the close up. The door, you know, where a lot of supply of oil was in. 
So I went to close that door, and somebody hollered, hey, here's the elevator. I run out there, they were already closing the door. I, the door was already not much, went up. I jumped, I tumbled right over the door inside. Mm. Yeah. And I begin, I would be gone. Mm. The smoke was so thick. Yeah. Did anybody die in that fire? Two. Two? Yeah. Prisoners or, or guards? Oh. Comics. Yeah. That made the newspaper, it, too. Yeah, that would be my case, too. That's now, right. Were you a supervisor then? Did you? Huh? Were you like the, the, the supervisor over these convicts in the mattress factory? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly uh, I run the shop Formal. all by myself. Uh -huh. They use those mattresses then in the in the institutions, state institutions, right? We make mattresses for all the uh, state hospitals and prisons. Yeah. Yeah. It was annoying to us. Tell, tell about that story about Leopold. Didn't he assist you? What? Leopold? What? Don't you, didn't you have Leopold work with you? <coughs> Leopold? Yeah, wasn't he from Chicago? He murdered some children? Some boys or something? Leopold and Lowe. No. Oh, was it then? Uh, what was the name? Leopold and Lowe. was two of them. Leopold and Lowe. They might be in the prison, but it didn't work for me. How, how, how about the how about the story about the guys fighting in the mattress shop that one time? You told me about the two convicts were fighting in the mattress shop. Fighting? You, oh yeah. Remember the story? And one got killed. You were telling me. Yeah, one one white man and a, and a color guy. They didn't hate. They they just they didn't get along. They, and they were picking on one another right now. So around 10 minutes to 12, a journey in every shop, you shake your men down and take them out for dinner. See? And while, while, while we start to shake them down, two of them start to fight. Fight like hell. So I had to run around for, to the telephone to notify their fight. In the meantime, that color guy that they were they were fighting, his part, uh, his partner was the one that hit him with a big club, wooden club that they found that. He hit him right over the head. Boom. Then uh, when he did that, I, I hollered at him from the telephone. Hey, don't do that. Hey. And he was the nicest guy in that shop, the one that did it. Hmm. Never caused any trouble to nobody. Quiet. But the reason he did because he, him, and the one was fight, they were sellers again. So he could try to help them out, I guess. They were what? Sellers. Yeah. Oh, and this was... They shared the same cell. The, who, the white guy uh, and his buddy. clobbered the black guy? Yeah. When he Get hit him the second other time on the side of the neck, oh. he just dropped down dead. But... Uh, what happened then? See, that guy was a no good. The one got killed. Yeah. It was second time in prison for him. Mm. Did, now, did, uh, did the guy that killed him, did he get, uh, did he get uh, sentenced for that? That guy, that guy that did that, he, uh, he, his mother was crippled. And he put her down the floor and, and, and raped her. Mm. His own mother. Mm. And he was in prison. I don't know how many years he was in. Mm. And then when I ran out, he went home, went by, lived by his brother. His brother has uh, no kids, you know, me including 
one uh, little girl around seven years old. Mm. When they were went to work or shopping or something, leave him home alone with her, he raped her. Back he goes to the place. Mm. The bad man. Yeah. That's the one that killed. It was on Collins Street last time I worked there. Well, but that was a cut of On Penitentiary, Street, right? Yeah. But that's right. the same thing. You're either yeah. you're, you're over there or Satchel. Yeah. It doesn't make any difference. Well, how long? How old? How old were you when you retired? Well, uh, I'll tell you. I put in 33 years at Satchel, uh, in, in Penitentiary, between Satchel and Collins Street. 33 years. That's Three. a long time. How old were you when you retired, Pop? Without the state police or with the state police? No, Without. 78. Oh, right. 78 and, when he retired. And they want me to, they want me to be uh, there yet. <laughs> yeah, but I, I said, no, I, I refuse to do that. You know, I was foreman then. It was a good job, good, good paying right. job. <coughs> did, did, did you get, when you got done at the state police, did, did uh, you retire from that job? Did they, or did you just continue that job on? In other words, did you, did you get a pension from state police? Or is that Regardless, part of Regardless, what do you work for state, you're entitled, you're, 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 that's on you're entitled pension. to pension from all the, From all those uh, years. From everything. All the years. So you got 18 yeah. plus 30. He got 18 plus, plus he went down the yeah. munitions wow. plant and worked down there before he uh, went to state. I'm, I'm getting pretty Eight, not 18. Yeah. I bet you are. So, yeah. Yeah. That would be 33 wow. from state fill plus all the other ones. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's good. Eight, 31 years. Some 37 or no, no, no. 50, 60, 70, 30, 80 30. years of work then for yeah. the government. No. No. Or 80 oh, years. Oh, he said 30. 30 40, and 30 and 18. 80. No, 36. 33 and 18. Oh. Well, That's almost what was the other from the state police. Boy. Well, he was, was only state eight years. Eight. Oh, I think so. Eight, eight. Oh, no. Eight. Oh, eight. eight. Oh, yeah. But then he worked on a munitions plant. So, okay, 41. 41 years. 44 years. Over 40. Uh, uh, over 40 years. 45 years. 45 yeah. years. All right. Yeah. yeah. I'm, uh, I'm not starving. I'm, I'm doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like you're doing okay. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> well how are you feeling now, Pa, as far as your health? You got a bad knee, right? No, everything is all right but my leg. That's it. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's the only thing. And he's 90 what? Six. 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 90, uh, 96 in three months. Whoa. 96 in three months, old. Yeah. 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 96 yeah. in three months, yeah. Doing good. Yeah. Do you have a garden? You live in your own house? Yeah. You take care of us. You like yeah. baseball games? Love what? baseball. Yeah. And you he like bowling. His, he loves his garden. Likes the Cubs. Yeah. Yeah, baseball. 7 o'clock tonight. And uh, Kate loves them too. Oh, I know she does. Cubs. Yeah. That's she watches good. She's, good. Uh, she's a remarkable woman. Mm -hmm. I'm just lucky I got her, I'm telling you. Yeah. Done a lot For 24 that. years, she's been with me. We never have one single agreement or argument between us. Wow. Never. <laughs> All right. That's good. Right, Jimbo. <laughs> when we make you make agreement a right? long time ago, that we're going to go all the way, regardless. All the way. And she says, she says all right. But now, the question is now. Now. Mm -hmm. As long as uh, Rose's husband was living, I don't think we need. You've lived so long. I mean, is because you the way you ate or the food you, you know the food that you've eaten or, or uh, no, or, no, or, that's uh, the secret. Nobody knows about that. You don't think there's any particular thing that you can say that you've lived to be 96 because you did such and such a thing. You don't think there's anything to that. You never know. <coughs> you, you do that part there, you don't know. But now you choose. You live in there. Uh, you might be here today, going tomorrow. You know, that that's something you don't know. But you me. you started uh, chewing tobacco when you were 17, and you still chew tobacco, right? Yeah. So 
I think I'm gonna start chewing tobacco. Well, I, tobacco didn't kill me. That's no. for sure. You eat yeah. meat and vegetables, That's true. and you eat everything. Yeah. A little bit of everything. Yeah. Moderate. Yeah, not too much. And you you don't eat late at night though. No. Yeah. It's but well, see, we're, we're looking for the secret of how to live so long, so we're asking you if there's anything we, that we should yeah, do. Yeah, how can you, how can you explain that? No, that, that, that's the secret. No. The doctors no. are all dead that we're telling you what to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. You go to see doctor, doctor say, well, tell you about this and that. But God, he's gone, I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've lived an inter interesting life because when you when you were born, they were just starting to invent the car, and now look, we went through through uh, trains and planes and jets. Yeah, and, but and space and ships, space ships, to and motorcycles, to, I had nine cars in my time, my own car. Nine automobiles. Yeah. All brand new? Not all brand new ones. No. Huh? No. Not all brand new ones, but some of them are. Some were new. I had, uh, let's see, three new ones. Three new ones. Or sure. uh, six were second-hand cars, <laughs> but good ones. Yeah. When did you quit driving? Yeah, How old were you when you quit driving? So I got used cars now. Mm -hmm. See? Oh, I don't know what. Three years ago. Ninety-three. Ninety-three. Uh, no. Yeah, he's 96. Yeah. Three years ago. 93 years old. 93 years old. Emma gave hers up about then, too, the next yeah. door neighbor. Yeah. And the only reason why is because of his vision. Yeah. Hers, too, yeah. Yeah, if he could still see real good, he would still be driving. <laughs> I bet he would. That's the thing oh, you miss yeah. the most. If my legs were all right, my eyesight was all right. Is that what you miss the most, not being able to drive? Well, it, when you go on on that uh, examination, if, as long as your eyes are, uh, are perfect, you, you you can always pass. But if your eyes goes are bad, you you're gone. Yeah. You can't get it. You got to see what the hell you're doing down the down the highway. <laughs> yeah. You got it. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, Brian's yeah, going to start driving. Your grandson is going to take over your place now, Brian. He's going to get his driver's license. Bri Brian's getting his driver's license. Who? Brian. Brian. Brian's getting his driver's license. Brian. Brian is getting his oh, dri yeah. driver's Brian license. Getting it? Yeah. So he'll take your place now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you know good no. Okay, well, Dad... It was really interesting listening to the story about your life. Yeah. We really enjoyed listening to it. It's very interesting. You've had a, a very interesting life. Yeah. So. Well, good. And I know you could go on for hours. There's still a lot you haven't told us. Uh, that's for sure. I got a lot to tell you. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll have Probably you over again secrets. and do this again. Yeah. Will you Probably do it again? Probably a few secrets too. Yeah. <laughs> Will you do it again oh, for us, yeah. Grandpa? Sure. We Sometime I talked to Jean. I said, Jean, I said I could talk to you for two hours and I never get through with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for a whole week. Yeah. Yeah. We got two hours of you on the tape. Yeah. Yeah. You said you could talk for a week. You said you were a blabbermouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. Maybe we'll get you some more, get a few more stories in another time. Think back. Probably, yeah. probably well, there's a story of all kinds. Of, uh, fishing story, hunting story. Oh, yeah, story, that's right. You're a fisherman, kind. hunter. Yeah. We yeah. never even hit on that. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. And fish. Jim asked me for that gun, and he go out to fish, uh, fish uh, hunt for pheasants. Where is that thing? The, around the white or where? Bro yeah, oh, yeah, Gardner. Dwight. Yeah. Gardner. Yeah. Bri yeah. Brian asked him. Oh, oh Gardner? Yeah. yeah. He, had, he had it. Uh -huh. he, he wanted to uh, buy it from him. 
Well, next time you trim those shrubs and uh, cut grass, or uh, that'll be maybe a couple of weeks from now. Yeah. If uh, we get any kind of rain, then the gra grass will start yeah. to grow. It'll start growing again. Then I'm gonna give you that gun. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, yeah, that's Brian wants it. Brian, Brian asked you for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I think it, Brian just wants that gun. Well, he'd like that to. That was a special thing. I think that's John. Mm -hmm. He wants to go hunting. Yeah. Okay. He likes to listen. Brian likes to listen to all your stories. Yeah. He came home, he was telling us about you shooting the squirrels on the roof. <laughs> he thought that was great. He told all his friends <laughs> when, you came, when he came over and you told him that story. That story about that squirrel you had on your roof? Yeah. Oh, he just yeah. thought that was so good. He is telling all his friends. <laughs> My grandpa shot a squirrel. Well, that was That's true, Jean. Oh, maybe about three years ago. Oh. <laughs> yeah. He shot the roof off. Yeah. <laughs> tell him, Grandpa. Tell Jean about it. Well, uh, squirrel was all you know those those, those sweet pears. Yeah. Squirrel go out to the Christ Church. They were eating them by bushes. You know, it was on all over the ground. So. I, I tried to chase him out, and the son of a gun jump on top of the, car, the house and stay right by the chimney. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I went down the basement. I, got, I, got, I did have only BB guns to not chase him away. But I, that, that didn't do not any good. So I got that regular hun hunting gun. Shotgun forever. Shotgun, 12 gauge. <laughs> Went up to knock him off. <laughs> <laughs> well, the neighbor come out, huh? Yeah. Shuba, Shuba said, hey, who's shooting around here? I said, damn, if I know, I said, maybe, I said, maybe, maybe that, uh, that, uh, the gun uh, on, at the corner of that fire or somebody. The car backfired. Oh, That's the part that Brian loved. Oh, no. And then he came out and he said, I don't know who shot the gun. Damn if I know. Is that what Brian loved? Yeah, oh. he loved that part. He just thought that was so funny. That was pretty good, Dad. Huh? Dad that was pretty funny. good. He's thinking quick. Yeah. He's yeah. mad in the house to tell me that story. Oh, he no. comes, Mom, Mom, why do you hear what Grandpa did? Why do you hear what Grandpa did? Uh, he just thought that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I was out fishing once. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> that's my whole shoe band in the Bay River. Uh-huh. And there were three le oh. big limbs, but this, this much. That high from 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 the water, broke right across the with a great big. When I got near, the, the, the snake would her tongue went like this. <laughs> oh, it scared me to death. That was water moccasin. Those yeah. are those are poison. Yeah, just as bad as a rattlesnake. Well, it was a big one. Well, I moved back away went right around. And then I find a big rock. I throw the rock, the rock, right on top, hit it right on top. The whole damn thing come down, down the ground, and the snake would <laughs> swim, swim, swim out on the other side of the river. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dangerous stuff out there. On the Kankakee? Yeah. No, DuPage. DuPage River. Yeah. Is that up by Plainfield? Yeah. No. That's a bit, well, it, it, uh, there's no other town near, it's south from Plainfield. Uh -huh. maybe, maybe about, it's behind Timberline there, isn't it? Uh, maybe about four or five miles yeah. Oh, yeah. I went there with Lake them Lake what did you do on Lake Renwick? What did you ever do there? Fish? Yeah. Lake Renwick? Yeah, and play out I used to go out 30. there. I used to go there. Good water there, huh? Oh yeah, but uh, uh, at first they they you could go in. Yeah. They let you in. They let you in for nothing. Then they stopped. The now nobody the can go in. But you used to catch fish there. Oh yeah. Good stuff. Good. 
Good clean fish. Yeah, uh, used to get black bass and and, uh, and uh, bluegills. Good ones too. Yeah. And yeah. Now they, they won't let down. nobody in no more. No more. Oh, you, you get anything make, in there. You want to make that bird you heaven. Get even bullheads and the nice. crappies and all that. <coughs> different kind of fish. Yeah. That's, That's material yeah. service. Yeah. Huh? That's material service now. Yeah. yeah they you know, they, they, when we uh, belonged to Lily Cash Club, yeah. my dad and I were fishing over Lily Cash, couldn't catch a thing, you know. And uh, it was late at night, and he says, come on, let's go, let's go through the railroad trestle here and over up over the hill. And we went over there in material service, this material service pit that was right across the street from Lily Cash. We threw the line in, no sooner we throw that line in, bullheads, as oh. big as catfish. Oh were boy. Biting. We, we caught, right? we pulled six bullheads out of there as big as catfish. I still remember that. Did anybody stop you? Well, no, it was, uh, it was dark. We, we couldn't even see what we were doing other than seeing those fish come in. Bringing them in my with mother, a flashlight. Yeah. My mother and I used to go fishing with you. We'd pack a picnic lunch and have a picnic. I remember yeah. that. Uh -huh. I remember one time it was uh, this is by uh, well, from Plainfield down in that woods, down, down there. Uh, we took uh, hot dogs and I had that little stove with gas. Yeah. You know. And uh, it was your uh, who and and uh, and uh, Francis. They we took them too along with us. Uh huh. I know. I remember a couple of times we were there. Last time we were there, it was a really hot day. So I uh, fish for a while, but then went swimming. Oh, did you swim? So, yeah, well, I, well, I could swim. Mm -hmm. well, they all went in there, uh, take a... Take a dip, huh? Go, yeah. <laughs> but boy, I didn't like a sunburn. My, you know, all at once I feel awful when I get out of the water, awful burn. You steep, you're down the water, didn't burn. You get out, you think you're on fire. <laughs> Next day, the whole time, the back was all blister, blister, blistered up. Mm -hmm. Blisters. You know. No sunblock in those days. <laughs> I, 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 I know I went to the doctor, I some fat guy, you know, he used to be on, on Hickory and Ruby Corner, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, and he told me what to do. You, you, you remember him yourself. 